Hey, this is Russ Anderson. This tutorial is about the phase system in SynthEyes, and I'm going to run through some of the operational details of using the phase room, the phase panel, the phase view to be able to create and manipulate phases. But in this tutorial, I'm not going to be telling you why you use this phase or that phase. That's kind of a, a separate subject. Here, we're all about the operational details. So to start with, I clicked on the phases view. Uh, the phases room up there, so I have the phase view, and I can start creating phases in it by right clicking in that phase view. And now I have a bunch of sub menus at the bottom that are all the various phases that are available. And obviously, that, that list of available phases is likely to change and increase from one version of SynthEyes to the next. Now, the clean start phase is always a good idea, it kind of resets the solution. So I've created one phase. It's uh, currently selected. I can just click in the view and re-click the phase to select it. So now I can go and add another phase. And as you see, they get wired together. I'm just dragging that phase around. I can also use the uh, up and down arrows, etc., on the keyboard to move it around and line things up nicely. So I can keep on going with this process and keep on generating a whole slew of different phases. And there are a bunch of different operations available in the right-click menu. So I can help line these things up, make them look however I want, and you know, do things like drag select to select a bunch of them. So those things should be uh, pretty typical sorts of operations to do. I can also go and you know shift click to add particular phases to the set of selected trackers or selected phases. So you'll notice that there's one thing that's different about these uh, individual phases that this one has a wider bar and that one is the root phase. And that root phase is what's used as the solution to pull the solution from when you do a, a typical go. So if I go and create some additional phases, these ones you'll see they're, they're not being connected together. Or that one was, but uh, the phases get connected if if the there's an existing selected phase then the new phase is collected connected to that previous one so i can actually go and select one up there add another one and it kind of gets wired in to the whole thing so there's there's an attempt to be relatively clever about how that stuff all happens so here actually i've got one collection of phases here that's going to produce a result. I've got some other phases that aren't being used at all. That's why they're this darker color. Now I could go to wire these together. I can just go and drag from the output pin to the input. That creates a wire. I can do the same thing from here. Even though there's a wire, these ones still aren't going to be used in the final solution. If I want the whole assembly to be used for the final solution, then I need to go and right click and here the problem is you won't be able to see, but there's uh, if I click on one and do set as root, that makes it the root that's going to be used as the solution. So I just go and, and do that set as root for that last one. Now you see that the entire chain of phases is going to be used to produce that final solution. If we want to go and disconnect something, I can select a phase, then right click in the one. Let's see, I'll we'll do this a different one so you can better see this. So we'll use disconnect from selected. So I right clicked on this one, so disconnect from that selected uh, selected one up there. And that's that's useful 
if the phase has a couple different inputs, you want to be able to control which of the inputs gets uh, unselected. And again, I can just go and drag from an output pin to an input pin, and uh, things will get rewired appropriately. One other thing that you uh, probably notice is that there's a little triangular corner in each of these phases. And that indicates whether or not that phase needs to be run. So if I, and, and when it gets clicked on, it tells you, it, it tells Synthize to actually go and run. So there I just double clicked on that and have it get run. I can run all the way through to the end even. And not, not too much useful is actually happening. Uh, because, <laughs> you know, we don't have any actual scenes set up. But uh, the bottom line here is that, you know, for the ones that are at, at least not complaining about whether they have valid inputs or not, you know, once they've been run, then the little tab there changes to green. If we go and then change one of the settings of a tracker, not only does its red tab, does its little tab turn red, but so do the tabs of the ones that are downstream of it, because they all, did, did, you know, are based on the uh, inputs that they're receiving. And so since one of their inputs has changed, they need to be rerun as well. So if I go and rerun one of those, you'll notice it says that it's working on phase two, and then three and five, but it's actually skipped number one, because number one was already valid, so it doesn't have to be rerun. So it's a way just to control, you know, what needs to be run, sa save some time, and so on in doing that. Now you can do some other interesting things once you've set up some uh, phases. Having gone to this trouble, if you want to use them in another scene, you have a couple of different options. First, you can go and just to select a bunch of phases. Maybe we'll take these guys out. And you can just do a uh, copy of the phases onto the clipboard. And now I can go to another scene, go to its phase view, and do a paste. You know, here, if I do that now, you see I get a second copy that I can just move around. For those of you who like to play with such things, you can also go and just paste. There's some text, an XML version of that that's sitting out on the clipboard. So you can go save it into a file if you want that away. Or you can go and take the whole collection of phases, and there's a phase library. So I can say, I want to save this whole thing, give it a name, and you notice that's out in your own user area. You have everybody has their own uh, phase library. You can just save it out there. And now, when you go to a, a new scene later, and you want to do that same set of operations more or less, you can just go back out to your phase library, click on that, and then bring in another copy of it. And now, maybe you want to change a couple settings or whatever, but you're all set to go and you've got that all pre-configured. So that hopefully gives you some idea of what the, uh, the phases are about. You know, you've got plenty of parameters to play with on each of these individual ones. And uh, in our next tutorials, we'll see what you can do with all these things now that you know how to operate the basic panels.